Well, I'm back on trail and this is the trail. <laughs> I gotta walk this road for something like 10 miles. There'll be no shade, but at least it's sort of a sprinkly rainy day, so it's not gonna be too bad. I can't believe I turned down a ride. <laughs> she said she'd give me a ride to where the trail leaves the road. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I think I'll do the continuous footsteps until I get fed up with it. <laughs> I've got about three miles left of this highway. It's pretty busy and nobody else has offered me a ride, but it hasn't been safe for anybody to do that. Fortunately, I can mostly walk on the soft shoulder here. Not, not very often do I have to walk on the pavement, but uh, I'll be glad when this is over. <laughs> it's where I'm going. Those are the mountains I climbed over a couple days ago. There's where I've been. There's that rabbit ears mountain. I'm almost to the dirt road. Or I don't know if it's dirt, but I'm almost to off of this highway. Well, that was uh, Jim's place. I didn't take a picture of him or anything, but real friendly guy. He says he takes care of this section of the trail. I guess he puts out little signs telling you where to find the water and stuff. Anyway, he's pretty chatty. I think I'm going to go for about an, another hour. It's a mile to the forest boundary, and then a little past that, I'll try to find a place to camp that roadwalk really swelled up my legs and I think the tide detergent gave me a rash on my legs from the leg sleeves that I wear to keep the sun from burning so I'm kind of feeling like a wreck now swollen and tired home sweet home Public lands, yay. So I got some kind of rash on my legs from my leg sleeves. It's really itchy. A little bit from my socks. I think. And there's some on the ankle. So I think I uh, should have rinsed the tide out of the laundry better. <laughs> So I got about 14 and a half miles today, all of it on roads. <laughs> my, uh, I hitched in with some guy who, and I, you know, we exchanged small talk. And then, so I asked him what he did and he uh, said he makes cheese. He milks cows and makes cheese. And I said, ooh, I like cheese. And he gave me a, a piece of like $9 and 25 cent piece of delicious cheese that was great and then as I'm walking down the road a lady offered me a ride but unfortunately nobody else did I probably would have taken it further down the road and then um, once I turned off the paved road onto the dirt road then I met this guy riding a little uh, ATV and he's a trail angel that kind of takes care of this section. And he said, make sure you stop at my place and get cookies. And so I stopped at his place and he gave me cookies. And other than that, um, I haven't seen any other hikers today, except for the one I met at breakfast in the hotel. 
and um, it's nice to be back on trail. I found a nice place tucked away in the trees. And so my feet are swollen, my legs are swollen, and I have this terrible rash, and it's going to feel good to just uh, relax a little bit. I have a short section. It's really boring, lots of road walking. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> oh yeah, and I forgot to mention. <clears throat> so after I packed up all my stuff and left my hotel, I got on the bus to go to the post office so I could mail home some things that I don't really need. And um, I did that. And then I got on the bus to go back to where my hotel was. It was sort of on the end of the line. I figured that would be a good spot to hitch. And so I spent like an hour trying to hitch and I didn't get a ride. And then just as another bus was coming, I set my, I looked up my pack and I noticed that my phone pad was missing. So I ran to the bus stop and I asked them, Hey, do you have my phone pad? Did you find a phone pad? And, and the bus driver said, no, um, but I'll put a word out and we'll see, you know, if one of the other buses has it. <laughs> and so I waited and, Three different buses went by, and finally on the third one, I said, hey, do you have my phone pad? Did I leave it on your bus? And he says, I don't think so. And I, he said, but you can come and look. And so I went in and I looked, and there it was. I thought I was going to have to go and buy a new phone pad, but I didn't have to do that. And so everything is all together, and everything is good, and I'm back on trail. <laughs> this is the smallest little spot I've gotten my tent to fit into. It's a really nice little spot. I'm right next to the road. You can see it over there, but I'm hidden away in these nice little trees. I didn't sleep that great. I woke up like at about one o'clock in the morning. I had a hard time falling back asleep and I was hungry. I kept thinking of all the things I could eat. But since I wear retainers, I don't want to have to deal with all that. So I'm just laying there hungry. <laughs> and uh, sometime in the evening before I was all the way asleep, or when I was just sort of relaxing, I think uh, Jim drove by to try to see where I camped. I think maybe his caretaker role is to make sure none of the CDT hikers camp on private property. I don't know. Either that or he's just really nosy. <laughs> anyway, I have no idea what's in store for me today. I know my first water is, was about, is going to be about eight miles from where I camped. And I ate the rest of that piece of cheese for breakfast. And when I get to the water, I'll have a, the rest of my breakfast. <laughs> and then I'll figure out what my day holds in store for me. I think I have to do some climbing. I'm doing some climbing now. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. I think that's a bear. Yes, it's a little bear. Hey bear! Hey bear! Hi princess! I hear gunfire. That guy Jim told me about this sign for water, said he made arrows, but I actually don't really need any water. And I think I'm about three miles from a little spring, so I'm gonna keep going. It's a little campsite. So he obviously knew people camped here and 
had easy access to water. Here's the little sign. Well, you hardly need Jim's water. There's a little swamp here. There's supposed to be water somewhere around here. This was only like two tenths of a mile from where that pond was. But maybe I'll stop and have a little breakfast. Today's breakfast is kind granola, peanut butter flavored with uh, chocolate breakfast essentials inside. So I noticed all these granolas in the store scream protein on the front of the label. But if you look at the label, there's barely any protein at all, five grams in a snack size and 10 grams in a bowl size. But then there's like 8% of saturated fat for the day in a bowl. And, uh, but then there's 37 grams of carbohydrates. So really this is carbs and saturated fat, which is terrible for you, especially for me with my enormously high cholesterol, but it tastes good. <laughs> I may be going over there to that mountain. Yep, I'm getting closer to it. I think that's my high point today. It's suddenly gotten really cold. So I wonder if it's uh, gonna rain. There's none of those puffy thunderstorm clouds. It's more of a, just a gray, dark gray. Well, I guess there's your answer. It's uh, starting to rain. How'd that mountain get over there? Where it came from. is looking out towards the east. So I think I'm going over there. I gotta drop way, way down and then climb way back up again unfortunately, but I believe it's probably going to the top of that. I'm so disoriented because I'm headed north and in general the trail is going east. So it won't go south again until I get to Rocky Mountain National Park to the uh, little shortcut. <laughs> so it's very confusing. So, I'm not sure, but I think I was up there. I mean, I came down into this canyon and now I'm up here on the other side. So, uh, it's leveled off a little bit. I'm getting pretty close to the top or something like the top, we'll see. Well, so much for leveling off. Ah, oh, so steep. <laughs> also, it's uh, approaching 11,000 800 feet, I think. So, yeah. That's where I came from. There's that pointy mountain.
decided I'd just aim for this trail and let my GPS catch up eventually. It has a hard time, far out is really buggy and it has a hard time with, if you get cell service, then suddenly it can't locate you anymore. And so you gotta go into the settings and turn the cellular data off. I don't know how the cell is turning itself back on all the time. But even then, sometimes it won't update and put you where you are. But I think this is where I'm supposed to be. So I think that big one is Sheep Mountain. I don't think I go to it, but I go near it. Hey, there's something there. It's either a geocache or some kind of trail register. I'm gonna check it out. drop down there and then look at way up there oh this is a really exhausting day look at the sky all of a sudden i wonder if i should just stay here for a while see what happens well these steep hills are pretty short so it's nice that direction Nasty that direction. <laughs> I think I can get up and over before anything happens. I recognize that one. I think that one's got a little structure on top. And this is where I came from. That's where I'm going. That's where I came from. I am so happy to see this water. It's been all day since about noon and it's six o'clock and it's been a brutal trail with lots of blowdowns and steep climbs. I think there's a campsite about 0.1 or 0.2 miles from here. So, and now there's thunderstorms and it's raining. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to getting some rest. Ah uh, yes, I think this is it. Home sweet home.
So I caught a chill in, after getting wet in the rain and uh, getting, I got like, my tent got all wet and then getting in and out of my tent, I my clothes got all wet. <laughs> but I did warm up and I slept pretty well. And I took a long time getting ready. It's about six o'clock, took me about an hour. I have to climb two two mountains now, or I guess I don't really climb Haystack Mountain, but I climb Parkview Mountain, which is like 12,000 feet <laughs> in six miles. So uh, hopefully it's not too bad. I guess that must be Haystack Mountain. The trail's been pretty pleasant, kind of downhill and now sort of slightly uphill. That means the last little bit's going to be tough. There's Parkview Mountain and the sun's just about to come up. There's some kind of structure up there. At least there won't be any blowdowns for the last bit up there. All oh, these blowdowns just make it so much worse. There's Haystack Mountain. It kind of looks like a haystack, doesn't it? <laughs> Time for breakfast and a yard sale, <laughs> drying out my stuff. There's uh, Sheep Mountain, yesterday's mountain, and there's Haystack, and there's Today's mountain. It's pretty tough today. There's where I'm going. And then it looks like I'll probably sort of go along this mountain here. Wow, this looks pretty cool. Some pretty cool ridge walking. Where I'm going. <sighs> and that's where I've been. Oh, I made it. It's 12,296 feet. Phew, that was probably the hardest climb I've ever done because there were no switchbacks. It just goes straight up. So I walked about as slow as you could possibly go. <laughs> Took me, I don't know, probably four hours. I, I'm not sure what time it is to go six miles. <laughs> four and a half miles to go six Four and a half hours to go six miles. <laughs> Can anybody walk slower than me? I don't know. <laughs> but I'm here. And look, here's where I get to go. That's where I came from. There's Haystack Mountain. And, um... Sheep Mountain. I'm standing on Parkview Mountain. I have to climb another mountain. It's probably that one there. This is not the way. After all, our compasses are all wonky, pointing the wrong way. We need to go down that way. So that means I have to go back up here. So the guy with the seashells on his back, he uh, doesn't speak English, he's from Brazil. Oh, okay, see? Adios. 
He doesn't speak English, he speaks Portuguese, and I don't speak Portuguese, but we kind of both almost speak Spanish. But I didn't know which direction he came from. But he came from this direction, and he's going to Canada. And I came from that direction. I'm coming from Canada. So we finally figured it out. <laughs> and we were able to help each other go the right way. Otherwise, we were both going the wrong way. So that was really funny. <laughs> Yeah, so the electronic compass on my phone, it just refuses to point in the correct direction. So, probably should get a real compass, a little button compass, just to be able to double check the right direction to go, because that's really frustrating. So there's where I was. There's the ridge I came up. There's the guy, the little tiny dot. <laughs> and then there's Haystack Mountain. Wowie. And then this is where I'm going. walking sounds really nice right now. Well, I went down to that highway and crossed it, and now it's like back to steep uphill again. It's so exhausting. So I don't think I go all the way up to the top of that. It looks like I might just go sort of around it and then down into a canyon where there's lots of water. So that'd be a nice welcome res respite from the last day and a half. So look at this. Burnt to a crisp. Not burnt to a crisp. This little ridge seems to be the fire line. Well, there's where I was. I came all the way down. Look at this huge burn zone. And this is where I'm going. I wonder if that's my trail there. Uh, water. It's been 12 miles since the last water. I'm gonna take a break here. It's times like these. I missed the PCT and it's switchbacks. This is as steep as climbing up to that. Look out. Hi, pretty bird. Pretty bird. What you eating? Well, I'm not going to get a high mileage day and <laughs> I, that steep hill was really hard. I was so hungry. So I stopped to get something to eat and the trail was really nice and level. <laughs> and now it's going down a little bit, but then there's a gigantic mountain coming up. So I don't think I have the energy to tackle that today. So I'm going to go as far as it seems doable. <laughs> and then call it a day. I could use the rest. It was a pretty exhausting day. <laughs> As 
so my dinner gave me a bit of a second wind. So I started this monster climb. I'm still on the lookout for a good camp spot though. I'm ready to quick. So I guess that's Ruby Mountain, but I don't go to the top. Uh, maybe I just go to that saddle. I'm not sure, but it goes around the summit and not on the summit. Far out, it's been crashing all morning. Every time I go to look at it, I have to start it up again. And then the arrow refuses to move from where I camped last night. So, it's so buggy. This, this stream is coming right out of that hole. <laughs> That's so cool. I guess it's also coming from up there. My arrow still has not moved. <laughs> I'm going. Ruben. Looks like there's a, a passage through there and I can see the trail. That's pretty cool. Sorry if you can hear my stomach growling. I'm pretty sure that's where I'm going. It's called Bowen Pass, Bowen Pass. Oh. So, it took an hour and a half for my arrow to update. <laughs> but that's better now. I can tell I'm on the right path. Where I'm going. I'm almost there. That's where I came from. And I am not sure where I'm going, but this is the other side. I see trails going up to there, and I see a trail going up to there, <laughs> but the trail just goes straight across. I'm at 11,470 feet. It's been really nice to have so many miles of mellow downhill trail that you can just walk and not, you know, pick your way carefully. Just cruise, put your head down, cruise your way through the miles. Here's where I came from. 
about to get to a highway. I'm not sure if I should just walk down the highway because it goes on this little, I don't know, spur trail. I don't know what you call it. And then it joins the highway further south. It might be easier just to walk on the highway to where it joins up again. Well, I just crossed the road. I have about seven miles to go before I get to town. Get some town food. <laughs> and hopefully place to take a shower. Boy, do I smell bad and my feet, oh, they stink. <laughs> well, this little spur trail has been very nice. Not too strenuous. Look at this lovely bridge. <laughs> so apparently this, there's a little trail that parallels the highway. So I don't have to actually hike on the highway. I'm gonna take this instead. Wonder I don't step on them. <laughs> There's the road over there. Here's where I'm going. Look at those big mountains. Well, civilization. I made it. The trail is actually going through town. So I'm still trying to find a place to stay. One place wanted 250 bucks for one night and one place was full because they have a retreat and I had to walk up the hill because I can't hear anything on my phone with my ears, especially not in a noisy restaurant. So now that I'm gonna try this other place, which means I gotta walk all the way back down the hill again. Hopefully we'll have a room for 155. That sounds like a reasonable price. <laughs> Well, I took a zero day. I laid on the couch in the community center, resting my knee. And then I just walked back in here to town. It's like the community center's like a half a mile out of town. Walked back here to town, got an elk burger, some tomato juice. I think I'm about as well fed and well hydrated as I'm ever gonna be. <laughs> So I think there's going to be some shade at the community center so I can sit out in the shade and rest for the rest of the day. And I'm going to get up early in the morning and hike out of here. And my next stop is um, the Winter Park area, 54 miles.